And I've got Tau Henari and Julia Faipoti with me to talk about this. No concession, but geez, what is it? 337 votes, Tau. Do you think that um, that's tw- game tw- over? 25 years later, I'm still waiting for a concession um, from <laughs> Bruce Gregory, and he died quite a while back. Look, um, I won on that night uh, by 300 and 308. Um, as far as I'm concerned, Rawiri's got it. He's got it in the bag. The trend has well is has been towards the Māori Party. Um, Tamati won last time by 1,700. Mm. That was his 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 majority. Against two to door. Yeah. Against two to door. Against yeah. two to door. So I mean, I, I can't I can't see uh, it being turned over by by uh, specials. So, so is this about uh, Rawiri Waititi or is it about Tamati Coffee? I mean, why, um, as Corin was saying there, asking there, you know, why is the red tide not come in for Tamati Coffee as well, or is it, or, or are being unfair to Rawiri, who uh, he's been pretty good in the candidate debates I saw? What is it? Well, I think it might be a little bit of both, mm. but the Māori electorates work s- slightly different than general seats, so there's not necessarily a flow-on red tide, although um, many have benefited from that. I mean, Rawiri has strong whakapapa from from Waiariki, um, known on the ground, and it's really hard, as we've said all, all night long, it's really hard to poll what are Māori thinking in electorates. Let's listen to him. That was so good too, wasn't it? I thought that uh, segue was going to work rather well. We did have him, didn't we? But, uh, but then, we, then we lost him. Gone. Well, fibre yeah. hasn't quite made it to Takaha yet, <laughs> but Kahapanui will be will be celebrating. <laughs> That's the first thing. I think someone cut the five G. Was right. that where <laughs> advanced New Zealand? <laughs> advanced oh, no. New Zealand cut the five G. But this is actually that, quite is monumental it? for Maori um, yeah, to yeah. have the Maori Party re-enter, to have the number of Maori in the Labour caucus in a majority government. This is an opportunity for Māori to be heard very strongly um, over the next three years uh, and for change will be expected. Yeah, and I, and I, and I, and I think it's, 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 it's great for 2023 as well. It gives them an opportunity to use the resources that you get when you're an MP to go I, out and oh campaign. Oh, yeah. You, 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 you're back. You, you know, you're a player again if you're in Parliament. Oh, absolutely. So that, that is important, and especially, we were talking about this with Bryce Edwards, if they could nudge um, over 1.2% of the party vote, then Debbie get comes her, in. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting they never asked people. I was watching their um, their debates and I watched their campaigns and they said they, they didn't want the party vote. I always wondered, but maybe, you know, the candidate vote was what they're all about. But I just thought, like, if they get... So if they have one MP is, and 3% of the party vote, then you're at four or five MPs. But, you've got, but what, what you've got for the first time in ev- ever is, is voters actually taking up the challenge of voting strategically. Aye. Well, Māori often do Aye. do that. Uh, this time is more more so than before because, the, the, like you said, there is a red tide, you know, a huge 18% swing to the government, but it didn't show up in the Māori seats. Yeah, and Māori do vote strategically and are often underreported and un- unknown how yep. Māori are feeling on the ground. And I think the Māori Party have run an extremely strong campaign for a party that's been out of Parliament for the last three years and have been working on the ground, connecting to the communities of which they were wanting to represent in the electorates that they were in. And were very strategic in knowing they, the only way they were going to get in is if they won the electoral, electoral seats. Yeah, I mean, it'd be interesting too because you'd have the co-leadership out of Parliament, wouldn't you? I mean, I guess just as yep. what it is, but um, keeping them cohesive, I guess, would be a challenge, but at least I've got a foothold. Interesting to see what flow on this might have effect this might have for for the cabinet because we were talking it a bit about great. this. It would be great. I mean, they've had the most amount of Maori MPs in government the last three years, and and rightfully so. Uh, Maori have been critical of what have they been able to achieve, and undoubtedly Maori around the Labor government table will have been pushing agenda at the table, but without strong. Māori interests being challenged within Parliament, it gives them very little leeway to push further. But now we're going to have very strong challenge within Parliament with at least one um, one Māori party candid- candidate as an MP, uh, where their sole interests are the interests of Māori um, 
that yeah. will really challenge I, I, I think that, that what this does is actually force the hand of, of uh, whoever's picking the cabinet. Absolutely. And so you're going to have the, the likes of Cousin Penny um, lining up to be the Minister Aye. of Health. You're going to have other uh, members like Willow Jean. Jean. Um, mm. look, look, look at the Yeah, well, the when you look, just does. to stop you on health, um, th- I mean, that, that's where our problems are, isn't it? I oh, mean, Māori well, health is way behind. And I, and so. I hear what Bryce is Bryce saying is that they're going to leave it in the hands of um, uh, HIP. Hipkins. I mean, I'm not saying yeah. Hipkins has, has been bad, but, has education. but he's the Minister of Education, for goodness sake. And you had Peony come out before the election to say he's putting his hand up to be the next Health Minister. If he's not put in that position, it would be an act of choice of Jacinda and the Labour Cabinet. When you have the mandate, um, notwithstanding that Tamati hasn't been re-elected, the Māori caucus have performed strongly for Labour and have brought the Māori vote to this government, they can't be taken for granted. And if you have someone like Penny saying, I want I want to be the Minister of Health, yep. you have a government that recognises, yes, we want to honour a lot of statements. We want to recognise the treaty, we want to recognise the rights of, of Māori, we want to address the inequities, and we know our health system is... Um, of the systemic racism, the inequities that are experienced by Māori within that, yeah. then you to actively choose not to put Penny there is a mm. problem. I want to talk about justice too when we come back.